Lewis, we appreciate your time. Great to see you back in Australia again, smiling and all. How are you going? I'm doing great. Um, really happy to be back in Australia. Um, I think this is the first time I've actually really been able to come out extra early and I and, uh, went to Byron Bay and had, you know, was just blown away by how beautiful it was and um, have a newfound love, like a, an even bigger love now for the place. Tell me about your Byron experience. Did you get any waves? Did you surf the I pass did. or not? Did you? Yeah. OK, now we've got the next yeah. 10 minutes covered. I was in, uh, uh, surfed on water, water goes. Water goes? Uh, water goes, yeah. Um, I did some... Uh, I, I tried to do um, foiling there. Oh, yeah. And then one of the guys that I was with said he'd, like, further down hit a shark, so I, I got straight out immediately, <laughs> as, uh, as he told me that. And then, um, and then I went on Tello. Yep. Is it Tello Beach? Tello's, yep. Tello's. Um, and got some wicked waves out there, so... Um, but I'm just generally happy that I didn't get eaten. <laughs> well, it's fantastic but, to hear. But the place is beautiful, it's just such a great... Um, I didn't know that there was that holiday destination here. Yeah, it's a magnificent part of the world. You didn't go to a venue by the name of Cheeky Monkeys, do you? Bit of an old school pub, dance on the tables. Was, no, you, no, I'm not really into pubs. So <laughs> <laughs> I've never been into pubs. I worked at one when I was like 17 or Did something you? like that. What were you doing? I was a bartender. All right, what'd they pay you? Um, <laughs> I think I was getting like £3.50 an hour or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> Well, things have gone in the right three direction. Twenty or three, something like that. Well, you know, it was it minimum right wage. It was, it was, uh, yeah, it was a good experience. But the best part of it was when I quit uh, in my last day and I cleaned up the bar. And then I was like, "What are these drinks that I've been giving everyone?" So I tried everything, and I, and my, my dad had to come pick me up. And I was absolutely <laughs> hammered. <laughs> Just you, tried a little bit of everything, but I was. Whew. Do you get that opportunity? in your role, in your job, in your life, to stop and see places? Like, I'm sure you have friends all around the world from where you stop, but do you get to stop and experience and enjoy, or is it pretty much the racetrack? It has to be a real conscious effort to really try and plan way, way ahead, um, because otherwise just the, t the team just book up things, yep. and so then it often is a, a hop in and hop out uh, to most of the places. So. I was saying these 15 years, there have been times if you come out, like I once went to the Gold Coast, for example, but I had like two days there. Yep. And so this time was the first time I'd had like, I had four days where I'd really got to kind of drive around and um, I rode around on bike, bicycles and um, stopped in cafes for coffee. I went to the local supermarket and just did some grocery shopping, you know, just trying to get a bit of a, bit of a vibe of how the Aussies live in, you know, and, and spend their their weekends there, or their, their breaks there, and um, it's somewhere that I could definitely live. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I just love the surf life and the community as well, you know. Um, and wetsuit or no wetsuit? No wetsuit. So you need to come down here where the big men are. So Bell's starts next week down at Bell's Beach. The WSL event starts down there, but it's more your wetsuit territory down there. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. The only thing is, I I've now gone to the. I've been doing like a lot of cryotherapy and stuff like that, so now I just go in my shorts, but I, I got massive chest rash the other day on Tello. Oh, it hurt so much. I've, got, I've literally got some scabs here right now. <laughs> but it's tricks of the trade. Uh, I look back at it. So you debuted here mm. in 2007. I know, geez. Like 17 seasons ago. Oh, God. It's I was, crazy. I, was, I don't understand how it went so quick. Has it gone quick? I feel like it's gone by. What, what are your memories night. of that, that first race? The first time you stepped out? I think you were on the podium, weren't you? Mm. Um, Maybe you finished third? Yeah, I did, right? Yeah. 300 plus races ago. I think I, I remember just this. I remember the start. Had like it was the best opener of, of one of the best, if not the best, opener of a race that I, I've ever really had. Um, and then almost having second in my first race. Uh, and then I think just coming out of the garage, I remember seeing my dad, and we just couldn't believe it. Kind of pinching ourselves, you know, like we there was some. It was such a long journey, and there was so many times where we. We doubted ourselves. There were so many times we didn't know whether it was going to happen. There were so many times there were so many tears and um, emotional outbursts, and then just so much perseverance and and uh, 
and you know determination from from us as a family and so then to be in the paddock and once well once I was on track we knew it was real you know like because up until then it could have been taken from us at any point you know so did, did you did you think as a kid every kid wants to do something amazing and many do and you obviously have did, did you actually think you'd get there yes so you were confident the whole way along um, no, it's not that I was confident. I think I was just so dead set on it. Like, I'm going to get there. Um, I was that determined, but I, w w no, there was definitely, I was nervous every day. I'd wake up, I didn't know whether I was working on always trying to make sure I kept my deal with McLaren. I wanted to always stay in the good books with Ron, so I, I had to make sure I won every race, so I made sure I just won everything I could. I won every championship, really, that I, that I did, and, um, was just really focused on delivering, you know, because I was like, any time, any second place or anything below would be, in my mind, was a failure at the time, and, and I might lose my job, I might lose, lose my opportunity. It's a lot of pressure for a kid. It's a yeah. high bar. It is, and, and honestly, it's, it was a bar that I mostly set myself, because whilst, yes, I had to, I did have to perform, probably not to the, the, the level that I did in order to have a, a, an opportunity to at least get to cars, for example. But I set the bar so high because I wanted to make sure that I was the best, undeniably, and that's what I worked towards. So if you could go back now with 300 plus races and championships and, and life under your belt and grab yourself in that first start, what would you say? Um, well, I wouldn't change it, so I wouldn't really want to go and say oh. anything to... Um, I think if I could go back and talk to my younger self, it would not take take things too seriously, or take yourself too seriously. Um, I think I, I got so caught up in the intensity of wanting to be perfect in racing, 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 racing. I completely secluded myself from the fun things in life that are along the journey at the same time. So um, I would have said, have fun with it, you know, um, and. Uh, but I, th I guess I was still, for a long, long time, living with the idea that it could always be taken away from me. And I lived in that way for a long, long, long time. Um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, she just keeps you on your toes and keeps you working, right? Keeps you honest. And how do you improve as a driver? Like, we look at athletes as they get older, they get bigger and they get stronger and they get more powerful, which is not necessarily beneficial in what you do. How, how have you improved as a driver? I'm sure this could be a four-hour answer, compared to the 2023 version, compared to the 2007 or the 2009 or the 2012 version of Lewis Hamilton. How have you, in, have you improved your craft? Um, a lot of it's been done in the background, so in the processes in the background, in, in how I engage with engineers, how I um, am able to uh, extract what I need from all the different sections, uh, different departments. It's how I'm able to, I think the bouncing back scenario, I think particularly when I was younger, I had a bad race and I, you can talk to me for days. Right. Um, I was in such a dark place often. So being able to recover and get, you know, past is past five minutes ago, I can't, I can't change that. What I can change is how I move forwards. So that's something uh, that was a huge step for me. The physicality side of it, uh, how you, how you eat, how you prepare, um, uh, time management, um, understanding of tires, and uh, I mean, I understand the car so much more now than I, when I did when I was when I first got here. For example, I was at the mercy of the engineers around me. I couldn't dictate mm. a huge amount. Um, I couldn't say, "Hey, guys, this is the direction we need to go." I can do that now. I can. I know what I need in the car in order to do what I need to do, in order to be able to, to extract my performance and the performance of the car. And so, um, and yeah, so there's a lot of, er there is a lot of areas. Um, and then there's a calmness in the mind that I have now that I didn't have then. So it comes with experience. Uh, how have you stayed grounded? So, so you walk in here today and you smile and you say hello and you introduce yourself and you're warm and you're friendly. And, and that's fantastic for us, but you, you don't need to do those things. But, and a lot of people that have achieved the success you have aren't necessarily that way, but you've maintained that warmth, which is oh, wonderful to deal with. I appreciate that. 
it, it, it just makes it a lot easier for us. I'm not sitting here nervously thinking, oh, Lewis Hamilton's going to come in here and he's going to blow up about this and that or the other. I know what I'm going to get because of the warmth you've always portrayed. So has that been a conscious effort to stay grounded and stay what we would call in Australia a good bloke? I appreciate it. Uh, no, it's been... That's... I think... I think... Um, I definitely think... Let's be real. I think for anybody coming from a normal background. Uh, you know, I grew up in a council estate. I would, I, I grew up on my my dad's couch. You know, like I we, we didn't have a lot, and then all of a sudden you're you know down the road you're all of a sudden in the spotlight. You, you, things are thrown at you. You you're all of a sudden you you come into money. And yes. It's almost impossible not to levitate. You know, you lift off and you start getting your head into cloud nine and and it's and it's hard sometimes to see the wood from the trees, you know, and it takes a lot of it does take um, good people around you. So like, you know, I'm remain close to my parents. Um, but I think once you then come down and you get your feet back on the ground, you're still the same person. You know, I'm very much in touch with my inner child. I'm still that kid that was eight years old that wanted to be world champion that went out to Ron Dennis and told him I was going to be the best driver in the world one day. Um, and I think uh, for that, I'm really grateful. And I think also just I'm very conscious of, of how lucky I am. You know, I remember, you know, just having the, the jobs that I had, you know, at the working struggle. Working in the pub. Yeah, working in the pub, working for minimum wage and and um, and getting your check at the at the end of the week uh, at the end of the month or whatever it is and just knowing how much time and energy you put into it and having that balance and um, I appreciate that I appreciate everything that I that I have and everything that's around me and how hard everybody else around me works so I'm no higher or lower than I think anybody in this team I think I'm just another uh, link in the chain of this amazing organization and um, and in this whole circus, to be honest, and um, yeah. The physical act of driving the car, do you still love it again? We turn in on a Sunday and we go, wow, that looks fun, but you've done it 300 plus times. Do you still, like, well, you're smiling about it now, so do you still love getting there and being on the start and hitting turn three at Albert Park, etc.? Love it. Is it? Love, yeah. It's like, it's like when you get the bug in surfing, you know, and you catch a wave for that short space a second of feeling. Maybe you probably fall or whatever, but when you yeah. do catch the wave, it's like this. It's a sensation that you just, that nothing can come close to, so. Does anything else match it, though? Like, when you talk about surfing or, or skiing or snowboarding? Um, when my niece and nephew look into my eyes and, and call me uncle, that's oh. probably the one thing that comes close to that feeling of just, like, but yeah, that's that's probably the closest thing. But then I guess you can do skydiving, you can do other wild things, but that's a, that's a safer one. <laughs> yeah, that's a great description. Um, but uh, yeah, I really, I do love it. I don't like driving not great cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go near that. You know, like, I, don't like, I don't like driving a car that's not the car that we had meant to have. Um, but, but I love that challenge of like, okay, what can I do with it? How do I, how do I, Okay, we're not, we're not, wins is not possible right now, so what's the maximum we can get? Can we be a little cheeky and get like, if fifth is the best we can get, can we get a fourth or a third? And just make sure we're consistent and make sure that you're fit and ready so that when the car does all of a sudden switch on and it is the car that you dreamed of having, you're ready. And I'm ready to win a world championship. I've prepared the best way I can this year. I think the best thing I've ever prepared. And if the car comes correct tomorrow, I'll be ready to fight for the World Championship. But unfortunately, that's not the case in the reality at the moment. But uh, I'm working with everyone here and back at the factory to, to get there. So what have you learned about leadership when things haven't been as good? Well, you know, I, I, I'm sure it's not easy when things are flying, but when your backs are to the wall in, yeah. in, in terms, what have you learned about yourself and helping the team? Uh, I think last year was a really, I think it was, I mean, I don't feel that there are any mistakes. I don't, I feel they're just only lessons, right? And I think last year, coming off of a difficult ending of a season, 
everyone kind of still feeling the previous end of year. Um, motivation, keeping everyone's spirits high. Um, it's how you show up, it's, it's your energy, it's your mood when you do arrive and how you greet people and how you show the people like, okay, damn, he's, he's with us today. He's on it. Um, and you know, I'm not perfect. I, some days I'm tired, I'm groggy, and I'm, just, I'm not all there, like as some people are when you just arrive into your office. But, um, and I think it's also showing, uh, showing vulnerability, I think is really important, particularly as we're, it's a very male dominated sport. Right? Mm. And a lot of these guys don't, engineers don't show emotion. You know, like whether you're on a high or you're low, they're like, you know, they're calm. But it, deep down inside, they've got them. They, they can feel something, and it's it's showing them it's okay to feel that, and it's okay if you're feeling down. Share it with us. We'll get there. And just having those conversations with people, I think, is something that I that I've really learned to appreciate. And uh, I think I've broken through to a lot of people. But first, it actually took a long. It took time for me to have to do that for myself. And that's uh, understanding about self forgiveness, self love, uh, which I would I didn't have when I was a kid. And I didn't have when I first got here. I was just so tough on myself when I failed. And you fail a million times more than you succeed. Mm. And so um, it's learning how to just forgive yourself and move on. And uh, once I've learned how to do that for myself, then I could do that for others. And um, I have always had compassion for others out there and for things I and, and things I've seen happen and for people out there in the world, but not having any compassion for myself. As soon as I was able to do that, then I think through that particularly through that that part last year, the difficult season we had last year, then I was able to then do that for those around me, I think. Um, and be like, come on, guys, this is where we're going. Get off your asses, we're, go we're gonna get there, you know? And that was, uh, that, that for me is even better than the driving part, that's being a real teammate and, a, and, a, and yeah. It's a beautiful answer. So many people around the world look up to you, so many kids, talked about being an uncle for those little ones that look up to you with stars in their eyes that want to achieve success in their field you've had a lot you've been through the ups and downs what advice would you give to those young in inquiring minds oh i think it's a difficult one i think really um, hard question i think it is because there's so much you can say and i think i think um listen to your parents i remember always thinking i knew i knew what was right always and <laughs> Now I'm older, I'm like, damn, dad was... Can you talk to my 13-year-old? Right. Can yeah, you talk to my 13-year-old for me? Parents were right about pretty much almost everything, not everything, but um, I think it's it's find something that you love and give it everything. And even if you don't make it with that, that you know, there should be other things that you, if you can fall back onto. And education is the key. Um, get into STEM subjects. It opens up so many options for, for a bright future. And, and the single most important thing, I think, is believe in yourself. No one's ever going to do it for you. You can't live off other people believe, believing in you um, because you need to be able to do it for yourself, I think. So it's, it's, and that's speaking positively about yourself. So you got this. I can do this. Don't ever say I can't. So I don't, I don't have that. I don't use that word ever. I can't. It might be difficult, but there's no, I can't, it's always, I can. So, um, so I just tell that, tell that to myself a lot. So even if you think you're crazy, you just keep saying, I can, I can, I got this. I'm gonna have a great day today. Um, and it will, man at the more you say it, the more you will manifest that. Thank you for making our day a great day with your warmth, your generosity and your time, mate. Good luck with everything moving forward, but it's a pleasure to have a chat with you. And again, thanks for being such a, a nice fellow about Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming, Rose. Good on you, Thank mate. Thank you, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it.